Hello, this is David Abonic Turtle. I thought I'd take a quick look at the Forex spot market or the spot foreign exchange quote. And that's because yesterday the big news was a drop in the euro. As illustrated here by this intraday chart that I pulled, that's the price action just for a single day. And near the end of the day when I took this exchange rate, we, we were down to 1.3032. Now it's difficult to talk about a currency in isolation. We really got currency pairs. So these are two of the major currencies against each other, the euro and the US dollar. And you can see here that the syntax for that quote is euro forward slash US dollar. And then here we've got the spot FX or Forex rate of 1.3032. Now, this is a European quote because the euro is in front. It's first. It's also called the base currency. Fiber here is the nickname for this particular currency pair. The second currency, in this case the U.S. dollar, is the quote currency, also called the counter currency I like quote. So we've got base is always first, followed by the quote currency. So the 1.3032 is really expressed in terms of the quote currency. That means we could put a dollar sign in front of this. And we've really got 1.3032 US dollars would buy for us one unit of the base currency, in this case the euro. Now that is the confusing part, at least for our members in our forum, because in finance we're used to looking at this as a ratio where the, we've got a numerator and denominator. And that, if you're tempted to look at that, the ratio, the problem is you've got to really got to invert this. It's exactly the opposite of what we look, we see. The base currency of euro is really in the denominator. It's one unit of the base currency, buys us how much of the quote currency. So euro is the base, a quote of 1.3032 US dollars means that this spot Forex rate 1.3032 US dollars as the quote currency will buy us one unit of the base currency, the euro. We could take the reciprocal of that. I'm not going to do that because I wanted to just isolate on what it means to be stronger or weaker. And just really briefly here in the quote, 1.3032, you see as usual in the markets, we've got a bid and an offer, also called the ask. The offer is also always going to be greater than the bid. And the bid here is the lower price at which the market maker will buy for the base currency. So the market maker will pay this in order to buy one unit of euro. And they will sell at a higher price for more dollars, one unit of the euro. That's our the market maker, our counterparty. That means we, we will have to sell at this lower price and buy at this higher price. But there and the difference between them is going to be the spread. And here you can see it's pretty tight. We're out to four decimal places. But now let's go and look at here we see the price action here, a decline down to 130. And so what is it going to mean? Just for example, it didn't get this bad, so to speak. But if we if this number went down to 1.20, what do we really mean? Well, if I just put that into our ratio here, the 1.2 now means that we only need 1.2 US dollars to buy one unit of the base currency. And so we now we can see why finally there's it's somewhat natural to quote it this way. As this number moves up, it reflects a strengthening here of the base currency. As this number moves down, it's a weakening of the base currency. And so we can look at this chart and now after you're a little familiar with this, it makes a lot of sense. A drop here in the price reflects a weakness in this first or base currency. 1.2 dollars means that the euro is weaker and the quote currency is stronger after all. Down at 1.2, it takes fewer dollars to buy the same one unit of the base currency or one euro. On the other hand, if we went up to 1.4 here, we can now just in quickly surmise that that's going to be a strengthening in the base currency and similarly a weakening of the 
uh, quote currency, the U.S. dollar. And after all, we now need more dollars to buy the same one euro. And now just to go down to another popular or um, currency, the dollar Swiss or Swissy. That's an American quote instead of a European quote because now the U.S. dollar is in front and this first currency again is the base currency. And so that's quoted at uh, the time that I looked at it, 0.9454. And you can see instead of going down, that was going up. But just like the chart that we looked at before with the U.S. dollar versus the euro, it also reflects a strengthening of the U.S. dollar, this time against the Swiss franc. And now we can see that the 0.9454 is in terms of the quote currency or the Swiss franc. And that means that 0.9454 Swiss francs will purchase us one US dollar. Such that if it went down to 0.8, what would that reflect? Well, the decrease in the value would reflect a weakening of the base currency and a strengthening of the quote currency, in this case, the Swiss franc. After all, at 0 0.80, we need fewer Swiss francs to purchase one US dollar. It must be getting stronger. On the other hand, if the Swiss franc moved up to 1.100, I'm just making this up, or at least this exchange rate, let me put it this way, the, at least that this exchange rate moved up, this would reflect a strengthening of the base currency or the U.S. dollar and a weakening of the quote currency, the Swiss franc. After all, at 1.10, we, we, we would receive more Swiss francs for one dollar. So our dollar has more purchasing power in terms of strength fran Swiss francs. Or put another way, it would cost us more Swiss francs to purchase the same one dollar, so the Swiss franc weaker. But again, it's really easiest to reflect on this movement in this price, This val the price is going up, that reflects strength in that first or base currency. So hopefully that's helpful. This is David Harper, the Benek Turtle. Thank you for your time.